Well, today we're going to continue our study in Ephesians. Last week we completed Ephesians chapter 1, which talked about grace and, and, and grace coming to us in Christ, all the spiritual blessings that are ours in Christ, that out of love that God predetermined beforehand that He was going to bring grace to the human race in Christ. And through grace our sins have been forgiven, we've been made blameless before God without fault. We become a part of the family of grace where, where God, we're the hands and feet of Christ now. We learn that grace is the most powerful force in the planet, the power to change the life of a person. And so today we're going to continue in Ephesians by looking in Ephesians chapter 2. And Paul's continuing his theme of grace. And so let's pick up in Ephesians chapter 2. Paul said, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Paul talks about that sins brings death. God told Adam in the book of Genesis that if you eat of the tree, you will die. And Adam ate of the tree and he died. So the question is, what type of death does sin bring? Uh, sin brings disconnection from God. See, we were created to be in a relationship with God. Life for us is in relationship with God. An illustration would be uh, like a fish. Life for a fish is in the water. And if you separate the fish from the water, the fish dies. If you put the fish back in the water, the fish comes to life. Well, life for you and me, life for mankind, is found in God. What water is to the fish, God is to us. And if you separate mankind from God, God from mankind, then the source of life for us, we've been separated from it, and we die. And our only hope of being made alive again is to be placed back into relationship with God, is to be restored to God, reconciled to God in relationship. And then that's where life comes from. So we were dead in our spiritual, in our sins, in our transgressions. We were separated from God at one time. Notice he says, you were dead. In a minute he's going to say, you have been made alive. But before we get there, let's continue. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us lived among them at one time. At one time we gratified the cra cravings of our sinful nature, following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. See, sin has to be punished. There has to be a penalty for sin. God is a God of justice. God is a God who has to punish sin because He is a just God. He has law, and law has a penalty to it. Law is not law if the penalty isn't enforced. So sin has to be punished. There has to be wrath for sin. So it says, like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. And then here's where grace comes in. Paul sets us up in, he, in, in Ephesians chapter 2 to, to tell us about the grace of God. He sets us up by telling us about the sin of mankind, about the wrath we're under, and then he's going to tell us about God's grace. So let's look at this. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. You see what this says? That God loved us in our sins. His justice demanded that our sins be punished, but his love punished Christ for our sins. Jesus became the object of the wrath of God. Jesus became the object of the punishment of God. We became the object of His love when Christ became the object of His wrath. And it's not just that God loved us, it says here, but because of God's great love for us. God loves you greatly. No matter what your sin's been, no matter what you've done, no matter what your failures have, have, have been, God loves you greatly. It says, but because of God's great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, He is abundant in mercy. He pours out great love on us. He pours out great mercy on us. Mercy being God doesn't treat us as our sins deserve. Grace being He gives us the very opposite of what we deserve. He blesses us. But because of His great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ. So we've been made alive with Christ. We were dead in our sins. Christ took the penalty for our sins. He died our death. He rose from the dead. And now we've been made alive with Christ. Our, our relationship through Christ has been restored to God. We've been reconciled to God in relationship. We've been made alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. 
See, even in our sin, God loved us. And He saw our sin, and He saw Christ, and He put our sins upon Christ. And through Christ, we've been forgiven. Through Christ, we've been made alive. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, it is by grace, he concludes with verse 5, it is by grace you have been saved. So the question is this, what does it mean to be saved? To be saved means that I've been made alive again. To be saved means I've been resurrected from de the dead. That I, my re relationship with God's been restored. I'm reconciled to God in relationship. And what caused death? Sin caused death. Christ paid our full sin penalty on the cross. We've now been made alive with Christ. See, that's why forgiveness of sins is not an option. That's why we don't have to keep asking God to forgive us of sins. If we continue to, have to, if we continue to need to be forgiven before God, then every time we sin, we would die again spiritually with no hope of being made alive again. See, the Bible says in Colossians 2.14 that God forgave all of our sins and made us alive with Christ. The only way we could be made alive is if all of our sins would be forgiven. And if one sin isn't forgiven, then that sin causes spiritual death because it only takes one sin to cause spiritual death. See, salvation is we've been made alive with Christ. We have our life back. We've been restored into a relationship with God. And it comes by grace. It is by grace you've been made alive with Christ. It's by the unconditional love of God the unmerited kindness of God, and the unlimited forgiveness of God of our past, present, and all of our future sins in Christ have been paid for, have been forgiven. And now we're alive with Christ. I hope you have a great day.